Hello, welcome back to Garden Obsessed. My name is Carla, and today we are talking about seeds to sow four to six weeks before your last frost. So, as always, I have two groups. I have the edible things and the pretty flower things, and we will start with the edible things. Um, first though, we were away this weekend and I am happy to report that all of the seedlings survived, so that's exciting. Um, and I did have to reseed some of those sweet peas that I toasted uh, by leaving them out overnight when they were not ready in minus six degrees. Um, I lost a few more than I thought, probably about 30 or 40 percent survived um, but not very happily maybe a quarter of them did survive quite well and they're branching nicely I'll show you guys those on the next um, seedling room tour um, but I did reseed some just to be sure and I'm glad I did because a lot of the ones I thought were gonna make it haven't actually made it um, I took the first load of trays up to my cousin's greenhouse um, I think I took three trays up, so hopefully they're doing well. One of the trays I was a little worried about, um, it doesn't frost there in, in the greenhouse, but it gets quite cool, um, and they hadn't really been hardened off. Uh, I had coleus and lobelia, so fingers crossed those are okay. Lola's being a little sooky here. She's with me here on the couch. Um, we had her board overnight at her regular daycare on the weekend while we were away and she's always uh, a little sucky for the first few days when she comes home not to mention tired so you know a tired sucky Lola is one of my favorite things so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be upset about my snuggly puppy um, and I have been seeding a lot of things so I spent a lot of we ended up coming home early um, to try to beat some bad winter weather. We had kind of a bit of a snowstorm. And so I spent most of yesterday transplanting and seeding some things, mostly from the group previous to this. We are not four to six weeks from our frost date yet, but for those of you that are, I wanted to make sure that I made this video and got it out in time for you to get things seeded in that range. So, Let's get started for what you came here for. So the first thing in this group, like the last group, I have some lettuce seeds tucked in here. Um, lettuce is one of those things that pretty much every two weeks or every every two, two to four weeks is gonna get planted basically from now until like September. Um, so I just keep piggybacking like I have a lot of packages of lettuce seeds so I just kind of sprinkled them throughout the bags if you have one package of lettuce seed just keep moving it to the next bag um, however you want to do that and along with that we have some bok choy I've got a few different varieties here um, I picked up um, a new package this year just the other day um, it has a red variety, Ruby, which I've grown before, but ran out of seeds last year. And it also has a kind that I've never grown before, Hanakan, I think is how you say it. So super stoked to get some of these started. Um, we like our bok choy around here. It's nice to have it um, in stir fries and things like that. We've also got an assortment of cucumbers. So I'm going to need to cut back on these this year. I did manage to pick up um, a package of silver slicer cucumbers, which I've wanted to try for a couple years now, so that's awesome. Got some Space Master standard like Market More. Got a dark cucumber. Um, so we'll grow some of those and mostly eat them fresh, although Jarrett does want me to make him some bread and butter pickles. So we'll make bread and butter pickles and eat those fresh, and that'll be what we do with our cucumbers. Um, I've got a couple of melons. I never have good luck with melons. I've been trying to grow a Kajari melon for like four years now. I've also got a Tigger melon. Um, 
So I'll start, I'll start both of these and we'll see if we can actually get a melon this year. One of my favorite things, um, the melons and the rest of these edible things that I'm going to talk about, these are going to be closer to the four week mark. Um, I have made the mistake of starting these way too early inside. When they get too big, I find they don't transplant as well and they take up a lot of room. So, um, you know, the cucurbits, I'll wait for the four week mark and that might be something you wanna do too. These are also all things that you can direct sow um, if you have a long enough growing season. Like a lot of these, I've got summer squash here next. And those are things that I can definitely direct seed. Um, but I do like, um, I direct seeded them in the community garden last year and they have, we, we do get cucumber beetles here um, at our home garden, but it's usually a little later in the season and they don't attack the seedlings as early as like, you know, the first two cotyledon leaves were up in the community garden last year and already they were getting attacked by cucumber beetles. So I wanna have some established transplants for there this year. So, um, but yeah, by all means, you can definitely direct seed this stuff. I've got, I'm only growing the uh, Romanesco zucchini this year. Um, I like it a little more. Gray zucchini is my favorite, um, but I wasn't able to pick one up. So I'll grow the Romanesco. And then Patty Pan is my absolute favorite. We grew the early white scallop last year. Loved it. Um, we had e an Eclipse, which I think was a hybrid which wasn't my favorite. I think the green one that I actually like, which I did have the seeds, I just didn't grow them last year, is the Starship Hybrid. The skin I think is a little um, more tender. I found the skin a little tough on the ones I grew last year, the green ones. And then another one that I just picked up this year is the Bennings Green Tint Summer Squash. I've grown this one in the past too and really like it. So that's the Summer Squash. There's also a big category here for squash, like winter squash. So we've got Canada Crookneck. I'm trying Silver Bell squash this year for the first time. I think it's kind of like a, um, what are those called? I can't even remember. Um, we've got a, if I can remember, I'll put the name on the screen. Uh, spaghetti squash, I've got butternut, um, delicata, mashed potato squash, so that's exciting. Squash is one of my very favorite, um, very favorite things to grow. It's prolific, it stores well, so I'm hoping we have a really good squash here. In the last couple years, I've tried to grow it in, um, like, fabric pots, fabric raised beds, and haven't had the best luck. So we're just putting in an in-ground garden this year and we're gonna hopefully have the best squash year ever. I've also got some pumpkins. Um, I've got Long Island cheese, autumn frost, peanut, blue doll, and black futsu. So hopefully we'll get some cool pumpkins. And I'm gonna give Lufa and Birdhouse Gourd another try. I have successfully grown Birdhouse Gourd. I've never successfully grown a Lufa. Um, so hopefully this year is the year. So that's it for like the edible things. We'll do the flowers next. All right, this is a big category for some of the favorite heat loving flowers for summer. So um, I have maybe three, three and a half larger categories, and then there's a couple random things. So one of the smaller categories, I guess, that I have here, meaning I only have three that I'm gonna start, um, is stocks. So you can actually start stocks before now. I did start some of the seeds that I saved from last year, probably about a month ago they are actually, they've been moving in and out outdoors. They can take quite a frost. So 
those will probably actually get planted around the same time that I seed start these. Um, but this is just, um, I have a mix here, another mix, and then vintage brown. So I'll grow a few of those. I don't plan to grow a lot, but these other three categories, I plan to grow a lot. So Cosmos is one of my favorite things to grow. Um, there's so many different um, colors and shapes. One of my absolute favorites is probably this one. Um, this is like the double click cranberry. I just love the double flowers and how big they are. Um, I got snow puff to try this year. Um, I got pop sock white and cupcake blush seeds last year but can't remember if I didn't grow them or if those were just some of the plants that ended up languishing on the front deck until they died a slow, slow death. Um, Double Click by Color Rose is another one I really like. I've got a Pika Tea, um, Apricot Lemonade. I've had that, I grew that a few years ago and haven't grown it for a couple years, so I'm looking forward to growing that one again. Some seashells and a couple of new ones that I got in, in a seed swap. So lots of Cosmos. I might cut a few of them because that's quite a few Cosmos, but knowing me, I probably won't not grow them all. Um, another category that I really like is Phlox. Um, they're so pretty. I think they add so much to a bouquet. They smell amazing. Blushing Bride is one of my absolute favorites. Um, also Cherry Caramel, can't go wrong with that. I got a couple of mixes here um, and I have sugar stars. So hopefully there's some variety in those mixes. Um, I didn't buy any new seeds this year. I'm just gonna use what I have. And phlox can be a little mm, with the germination. So I plan to start a ton of them cause a few of these packets are getting older and I think the germination is going to be really poor. I had almost no germination on the Blushing Brides last year and I purchased this pack was new last year. So um, we're going to start a lot in hopes of getting, you know, a few. And then <laughs> I'm not even going to take the elastic band off of this, but these are the um, zinnias that I'm going to grow this year. There's such a variety. Um, in here, I've got like the State Fair, I've got most of the Queen Lime series in here. Um, there's some Oklahoma, there's some Benares Giant, and a few other things tucked in. And zinnias are just one of those standard, gotta grow it summertime flowers. They're just dependable and awesome, and I can never have enough zinnias. So I we'll probably be starting some of all of these. <laughs> um, now we have a few um, just not really, you know, odds and ends. They're not, you know, big categories like those other ones. So I'm gonna grow Mignonette, which is a really pretty spiky white flower. Um, I've got Sweet Annie, it smells good. It'll be a nice filler. Same with Oroch or Orach, Oroch, um, or Atriplex, if you wanna get Latin about it. Um, this one's Copper Plume, so that will be pretty. And then I thought I would grow some feather top grass. So those are the things that I plan to start in the four to six week range. Um, I'll pick away at them um, as that, you know, two week period goes. Like I said, the cucurbits will be saved for last. And even though like the four to six week range is kind of the last um, seed starting range window that I have, but I do have another couple categories um, that we'll talk about later. The next one will be um, what to direct sow when your soil is workable. So I hope you'll come back and join me for that video. I hope you found something informative here today. I hope you're enjoying your seed starting season. Um, it's well underway. We're, we're in the thick of it now and it won't be long until we are reaping the rewards. 
the days are starting to get um, a little a little nicer around here we lost all that snow that we got today with some sunshine so that was nice um, and some things are poking up in the garden so I'm starting I'm starting to you know anticipate and get excited um, about the season so I thank you for stopping by I hope you come back and we will see you next time can you be in Sookie Baby? Oh, yeah. And like, there's always like, they don't understand. People are so linear. And I've seen it in business, and I've seen it in the entertainment industry, and I've seen it even when people are trying to like imagine Can you be something. in a Sookie Baby? Describe it, and it doesn't exist. You just the never book? Of it being this concrete example, like when you hold up a page and it's exactly Someone was at daycare like, oh, all weekend, and she's but being a little clingy. People are There's Mr. Mama. Her mama missed her. Yes. Oh, you've made this association. Yes. It's a, it's a nail. It's not a, that nail.